Abba. Part 2. Interviews in Quebec. June 11, 2019. Abba, present in the heart of each person, as between each heart, presence is peace, is joy, and lightness. In the space of our meeting, on this day, I propose to answer your questions. First of all, let us take a few moments, in order to establish in each one, the embrace of the word slash verb, and the embrace of each Abba. Silence. So, beloved, I'll let you ask questions. Voice. Hello Abba. What does it mean that the waters from above have joined the waters from below? Thank you. Beloved, the waters below are all the waters manifested in this world. This is also called matrix waters, the waters on which the manifestation is based in this world. It is the water contained within your cells, within your bodies, like all the waters on the surface of this earth, but also in its sky. The waters below are therefore the waters of the manifestation, the matrix of life. The waters from above are the waters of mystery, the waters of baptism, the waters of transfiguration, the waters that you might call immaterial and yet are fertile. The union of the waters from above and the waters from below performs the miracle of only one thing, the waters from above are the waters of the mystery, the waters of baptism, the waters of transfiguration, but also the waters of the resurrection. Water can only be completed if it combines in itself, in its composition, the material aspect and the more subtle aspect. The waters from above are the waters of the mystery, the waters from below are the waters of matter. The reunion of mystery and matter realizes, in its own way, through this element, the alchemy that you now live between the simulacrum and the sacred. Beloved, you can continue. Voice. Hello Abba. In my daily life, I have seen that I have a behavioral changes such as reduced food, thirst, and this has also happened in marital life through a reduction in the desire to have sex, and yet everything is done naturally, without me asking for it. Yet it becomes difficult to respond to a spouse of this change. What should I say to her? Thank you with all my heart. I give thanks. Beloved, the intelligence of light works in everyone to lead everyone to the gates of truth, to exceed what must be. Evidently, the behavioral changes, which are different in each person, result in the disappearance or rare affection of what you call desire. This has nothing to do with a refusal as far as you are concerned, but rather, as you actually say, with a number of spontaneous changes. It is quite evident that when your habits change, under the influence and action of the intelligence of light, the one who has remained in his normal habits cannot understand it. So there is indeed, as you point out in this case, a form of difficulty in exchange or relationship, because it must adjust to both. Of course, as soon as the intelligence of light is at work, you can only notice, as has been explained many times, a set of changes concerning the different aspects of your life in this world. It's not your fault and there's nothing you can do about it. And of course, this leads to a relational change that requires a minimum of explanation on your part, in order to reassure and assure the partner that it is not a disinterest, but a physiological change occurring in you, and on which you can do nothing. The same is true, as you know, of what you call women, when what is called menopause occurs. This leads to a certain number of physical changes, as well as functional changes, and especially in relation to sexuality. What you need to understand is that from the moment the intelligence of light has worked in this genital and sexual sphere, it is necessary to understand that desire can no longer be as before, and that, on the contrary, you have the freedom to dispose of your body, and not to let yourself depend on desire, but simply on the intelligence of light. It exempts a break and balance resulting in a new balance, which must be understood and accepted by the other, but it is also appropriate for you to understand and accept that sexuality can no longer function as before, that is, you are master of your own desire, but desire no longer controls you. It is there for you, and you alone, regardless of the hormonal aspect modified, to decide on this sexual act, even without prior desire, and you will then see that this sexual act itself becomes free of any drive, any desire and is done only by the intention of having this sexual act. It is no longer a question of a decrease in sexual needs, 
but of the reorientation of the sexuality, which is no longer subject to impulses, whether animal, linked to ego and desire, but to a conscious act that you can consider as an offering, and you will then notice, at that moment, that even without any desire, you can perform the sexual act in complete freedom. This is to assimilate, understand and verify by yourself, the functioning of all your physiological functions, all the impulses existing within the habits of this body, are effectively deeply transformed by the intelligence of light. However, we cannot say that the intelligence of light has put an end to sexuality, but has put an end, in a certain way, to desires and impulses. It is therefore necessary to replace these desires and impulses by the attention of the sexual act as considered, not as a result of a physiological need, not as a hormonal action, but as an action of your consciousness itself, allowing yourself to penetrate this sexual sphere in order to impel by your intention the sexual act itself. You will also notice, on this occasion, that what is called jettisons, pleasure, becomes much more intense than when it was controlled by hormones, by impulses or by the ego. It is therefore a real transformation of sexuality itself, but not the end of sexuality, but it evidently requires a certain form of understanding, a certain form of learning, which will make you flourish, much more than sexuality driven simply by desire, by impulses or by hormones. This is therefore also a total freedom from one's own body and even from the sexual act. Just remember that you can't wait for the desire to come, because it won't come. It is you who must decide it, within your consciousness, and then, you will notice that the sexual act becomes even different, and is, in a way, magnified by the control that is not related to a subjugation, but rather to the freedom of the consciousness itself, expressed through this character. In the same way that physiological needs gradually decrease under the action of the intelligence of light, putting an end to compulsions and impulses, even outside the sexual sphere, putting an end to habits. But you will also notice if you take another sector, food, that even if there is no hunger as before, you can quite decide to eat to feed yourself without any hunger, and you will not feel any discomfort. This new freedom is lived in the most physiological and habitual functions of the human being and is evidently transformed, and no longer responds to chemical mechanisms or habits, but much more directly to the intention you are transmitting. Thus, by verifying and practicing it in this way, whether it is sexuality or anything else, you will easily notice that you have all the latitude and freedom to live this, according to your intention, according to your conscience, and not according to the needs of the body or the needs of the ego. Sexuality then really becomes an offering and not just an act of alchemy or ordinary chemistry, and that the satisfaction that results from sexuality conducted according to intention and not according to habitual desire, is much more fulfilling than that dictated by hormones or by the magnetic or sexual attraction itself. The same is true for food, since these are the two examples I have taken. You will be able to see that even without hunger, you can eat without any imbalance what you like and not what your body dictates to you. Leaving the body free also means accepting that under certain circumstances, you are master of this body and that this body can no longer control you. That too, there is just a reposition in link to adjustment and a form of learning, I would say, of these new modes of functioning, concerning all physiological and human needs. It is therefore really the end of sexual desire, which strictly speaking puts an end to sexual predation which is replaced by offering. And you will also notice that this sexual act at that moment no longer only interests the genitals, but comes directly to open your heart, as happens in tantrism, but in this case, in this case, there is no longer any need for techniques, but simply spontaneity. But this spontaneity cannot come from desire, but simply from your intention. And then you will happily notice, whether for food, sexuality or anything else, that it is precisely this freedom of decision, which magnifies things, and lets the energies of sexuality, no longer to spread downwards, but to reach the heart, which is evidently much more rewarding and much more fulfilling. Beloved, next question. Voice. I have a sister in my family who has Down syndrome. I was wondering what will happen to those people who are afflicted with this disease when the ascension takes place. Thank you Ab. Beloved, all those who have approached children or adults with this anomaly that you call Down syndrome, have noticed with ease that these beings live in the present moment. 
It is simply an intellectual disability, but this intellectual disability translates into spontaneity and a spontaneous opening of the heart. There is no tree summit that does not have an open heart, precisely because of this deficiency that you call intellectual. So don't worry about them, in the same way that it has always been said not to worry about children, because their hearts are open, no matter how their suffering may appear. So you don't have to worry about them, about the event, because children or adults with Down syndrome are already open to the heart. Next question. Voice. During the alignments, I feel great pressure, almost pain on the fire triangle. Is it a blockage or something else? This is absolutely not a blockage, but the alchemy of transmutation that is underway. For those who live triangles, gates, stars, you have seen that there are sometimes painful areas. This does not reflect a blockage, but rather the alchemy that is also underway. There is nothing to look for there too, but simply to lead oneself go through, to acquiesce, and to let things be lived, without carrying your conscience, because any pain related to this alchemy can only be resolved by itself. The most difficult thing is to accept not to carry your conscience on it, and not to look for anything other than what is happening spontaneously, and especially without you. The person's habit, the habit of the mind to explain and understand, no longer exists in relation to these mechanisms. Evidently, the habits of thinking in terms of pain and genes are no longer short compared to the intelligence of light. As soon as you accept it, then you will experience it and understand it. Silence Let the intelligence of light work. She doesn't need your character, no matter what happens in this body, and the more you accept, the more you agree, the more you agree, and the more evidently these things happen. But the questioning itself, the need for understanding, the need to know if it is blocked or normal, is enough to reinforce the blockage you feel. Here too, especially when it comes to the vibratory structures that you know and experience, the simple fact of no longer bringing your consciousness to what is happening, contrary to what was requested many years ago, makes it possible to pacify, fluidify and also to go through what is happening. This is the only correct and authentic positioning in relation to vibratory manifestations. These obviously reflect phenomena of friction and resistance that have nothing to do with any blockage or memory, but reside directly from the alchemy and progress, between the ephemeral and the eternal, between the simulacrum and the sacred. Silence. Beloved, next question. Voice. It is a testimony. During my trip to attend this meeting, I took the opportunity to visit my family who live near here. During this visit, I learned that a person in the family had a serious accident, that is two concussions and several broken ribs, fractures, etc., he's been in a coma for several days, intubated, caused respiratory arrest. He has to be disconnected the next day and the doctor says he is unlikely to survive. That night, I go to bed early, and at two in the morning, a very loud voice wakes me up, I hear a frame. I find myself sitting in my bed, in a state of amazement. A few minutes later, a white light illuminates the outside of my room, and illuminates the entire inside of the room. The next day, they must disconnect the artificial respirator between 8 a.m. and 9 a.m. I learn around noon that he woke up and came out of his coma at 6 a.m. that same morning. The doctor talks about a miracle. Can you shed some light on this subject? Thank you. Beloved, it should already be ensured that this has a connection with the person who is in a coma. This, since she's awake, you can ask her in a while. But it is indeed disturbing and questioning to see that this person, who was there for someone close to you, has certainly come to you in this way. That's the only explanation they can give you. There is probably a causal relationship between the coming of this being out of his body during his coma to you. But you will have the real explanation as soon as you can question this relative. But indeed, there is probably a direct relationship between the coma experienced by this relative and the fact that you experienced what you described the following night. Silence. Beloved, next question. Voice. The shift of consciousness, when it happens, can we still experience the human aspect? Beloved, of course. 
Once the changeover and the discovery that you are everything and nothing through experience, of course, you are present, and you ask the question, you obviously come back to the character, but you can only attend as the days and weeks go by the changes we talked about earlier for the first question. It is a completely physiological process, allowing the unknown to be known, and the unknown to be lived, even within the ephemeral, through this body. The shift of consciousness is not in the character, but ends the idea or consciousness of being a person. The control by the mind of life, and by the bodily impulses, disappears before what you are, that is, the intelligence of light. It is by returning precisely to the heart of the most ordinary consciousness that you will facilitate, in a way, the integration and emanation of the shift of lived consciousness, resulting in a permanent access to the center of your heart, to zero time, and then allowing to radiate, from the heart of the heart, the light of love, the truth of love, independently of any other thing existing at the level of the physical body. Of course, countless changes can occur, not only in behavior and habits, but also in all areas of your lives. It is the intelligence of light that decides, and you are that intelligence of light. This is how you lift the last condition and link to habits, link to the ultimate memories, link to the habits of form, but also simply of your life, and this, from all points of view. To become human again, as I said, is to rediscover within this character, yet always present even after the changeover, until the collective event at least, to discover the truth of love within the very heart of personal history, within the very sham, and in every circumstance that life will bring you or that you will encounter. Silence Beloved, next question. Voice could the planet grid happen at any time since time does not exist? Beloved, as I have specified, a calendar given long ago by the Archangel Enel and stipulated countless times by the Commander of the Elders, has been overwhelmed in some way in the scheduling of the events related to the event itself. So indeed, as you say, the event, whatever its nature, can occur at any time, because as you know, as was stated, the effect of surprise, even for those who are informed, is fundamental, in order to really and concretely grasp the whole of human consciousness, through the stunning called stasis. And whether it is through the trumpets, the call of Mary, the presence of Niver or the solar flash, it makes no difference to the conclusion, which is the resting of the consciousness, for 72 hours. It is on this occasion that the collective will live the white paradise in a uniform way, in all the consciences present, within this earth, but also within the entire intergalactic confederation of the free worlds, as well as in all the universes, the multiverses, as well as the seven super universes. Zero time is not for the earth, but for the whole of creation, because it required synchronicity in order to trigger a collective awakening, since ultimately all the consciences present are but one consciousness, here in this world, as in every dimension, as in every universe, as in every multiverse. Silence. Beloved, next question. Voice. Does repentance serve any purpose? Does it only serve the ego? Beloved, can you repeat? Voice. Repetition. Beloved, I could answer you in two ways. Yes and no. It depends on the initial location. The question to ask is much more. Who repents, as you said? The difference is very simple to see. If you truly repent, then you will see countless immediate transformations in your thoughts, habits, behaviors, and simply in the way you see things. If, on the other hand, the point of view is that of the ego, repentance brings nothing, transforms nothing. It is therefore the results obtained that will allow you to answer this question. Both are possible, depending on the result, if I can say so. Silence. However, the word repentance is a carrier within the brain of history, of repentance inscribed within religions, of guilt. That is why the term embrace, acceptance, evidence, acceptance, self-giving is much more important than this word of repentance. Repentance admits a prior fault and therefore actually concerns the ego, while acceptance concerns eternity, because eternity can only welcome itself, unlike ego. It is therefore the consequences of this repentance that will give you its origin. 
Does repentance concern the ego or does it concern the truth? But at the moment, the word repentance must rather be replaced by acceptance or embrace, by evidence. Repentance carries connotations, linked, as I have just said, to religions, but also to the notion of fault. Now the intelligence of light is perfect, but for that it is necessary to live it in order to notice that everything is in its place, that each event that occurs is of perfect logic, especially if the ego does not understand it. It is therefore your point of view that makes the difference, and, of course, the result seen and experienced after this repentance. Silence Beloved, next question. Voice. Accepting our personal suffering is very accessible. But the one inflicted on others constantly puts me back in the matrix. I know that I can help them, but I am not sure that my love is enough. What's the point of staying alive if the end of the game is the same? To play your role as a being of light, sower of light and anchor of light. You are the manifestation then, of the way, the truth and the life, and it is essential to stay alive. What's the point of staying alive? Simply to be what you are, because everything happens here on this earth. Reacting to suffering, whether animal or other human, or any other circumstance, is only the unexperienced, yet, that this suffering is in that place. It may seem terrible for the ego, it may be terrible for the person, and yet, for some consciences, there is no other possibility of being alive than to go through suffering. It will never be accepted by the ego, nor can the character who was empathic accept it. It is enough to go beyond the feeling, beyond the perception, beyond the suffering you experience through the suffering of others, and to simply love. Yes, love is the only solution, and there is no other solution, and the fact of saying to yourself, what is the point, simply proves that you have not yet seen, by yourself, the effectiveness of the love that you are on any suffering, whatever it may be. Love puts an end to suffering, suffering leads to love. It is the two sides of the same coin that is played. An angel, if he were to choose a human body today, would not take the body of a guide, but the body of a starving child, to experience human love for him. So you can see that love is the most important thing, the angels are telling you, I am telling you, and it is quite evident. Only the empathy and suffering that resonates with the other touches you, affects you. It is therefore in you that you must find out why you are affected by the suffering of the other, rather than loving him or her through his or her suffering. There is therefore an intimate and inner mechanism that has not yet been seen. For that, the two, you have to accept, you simply have to love, because there is no other possibility than to love the suffering perceived by the other for an empathy. Suffering always comes from the ego. There is no suffering, even in the greatest pain, for the one who was free. Nizargadatta had explained it perfectly during his lifetime. There are countless physiological explanations for this process of suffering, which is not to be confused with pain. You can experience pain without suffering. Most often, unfortunately, when you are still subjected somewhere to the ego, to the character, you make very little difference between pain and suffering. The one who was free distances himself very clearly from the order of pain and suffering, because even the most extreme pain cannot make him suffer, it can disturb him, it can question him, but it is not a suffering. The physiological and neurological pathways, which correspond to these two circuits, are profoundly different. The free man does not suffer, whatever his pains may be. He who was installed or who has not seen this, will experience suffering, even for so-called insignificant pain. This is the law of freedom, this is the law of grace. Silence Beloved, next question. Voice. Hello Abba, do we have to fulfill all the prophecies of St. John before the great event? Beloved, all prophecies do not have to be inevitable. There are countless examples of prophets who have said things that have not happened. They were not mistaken. Remember that the effect of surprise, even within the established prophecies in that you are living now, as explained by the commander from a certain year onwards, do not have to occur in full, precisely for the effect of surprise. There is a scenario, seen by the prophets, seen by certain mediums, announced from the highest heaven, which corresponds to an established plan that has been written. 
but love covers everything, love and zero time are present. It is in this sense that the event does not need to go through all the events that have been announced, especially in the Apocalypse of St. John. Everything can be, and everything must be, a surprise. Prophecies are simply used to locate you in a temple dynamic, to locate you in the time scale of this world. One only has to look around you, and look at what the prophets have said, to see that you have already been in prophetic times for many years. But indeed, you do not have to go through everything, because of the end of time, as had been said, love will shorten suffering. And as I said, the effect of surprise is fundamental, in order to surprise you, in order to seize you, in order to amaze you with love. Because the event, whatever its nature, is only related to our freedom, to our autonomy. This has been repeated countless times, in different ways, which I will summarize in the simplest way. The more chaos grows, the more freedom and joy you will find. You will only be able to see it, even if you still do not understand it. The consummation of this world by the event, the dissolution of illusory creation, only brings joy to you, even if there are still some reticences, misunderstandings or fears in you today. It is precisely this sideration that allows the freedom of love, ascension and dissolution. Remember, the final moment is only the initial moment. All this took place at the same time, out of all time and space, the earth is the meeting place of time and space. The earth is the place of the apparent return to zero point at zero time. So, yes, both the surprise effect is fundamental, and at the same time the fact of being captured and delighted in every sense of the word, is essential in the so-called collective process, linked to the event. But also remember that I said that you are also yourselves, and that the more you live the truth of your being and not your being, the more, by your simple presence, even if you do not perceive anything of it, you lighten humanity's burden of suffering, you help it to be pacified, but this you obviously see at the time of the event. But you can already perceive it when an event occurs that affects great archetypes, great buildings, or even certain territories. Beyond immediate suffering, immediate amazement or immediate terror, right after that, there is a form of purification and a transformation that occurs and is very real. There are now some countries living the action of the elements in ways that you might describe as dramatic according to the ego, but you are not these places, even if there is suffering, just behind there is freedom. Silence Beloved, another question. Voices, there are no more written questions. Then we can continue if you wish, with your oral questions. Beloved, it's not in the microphone. Voice, sister, my daughter wears the veil, is locked in the religion, so my question is that, if I realize the self, the shift of consciousness and I live in the present moment, if I live the realization of the self and I live the present moment of awakening consciousness, would that be a way to awaken it from itself? On the condition simply that you don't take on labor, because if you free yourself, you free everyone else. The intelligence of light makes no difference to what you call your daughter and the child who is starving to death on the other side of the globe. This is where your rectitude of love comes from, I would say. Don't try to think about her, let the light work, where and when it wants. The more many of you realize awakening, not self, the more you allow countless brothers and sisters from everywhere, wherever they are on this planet, but also for the other dimensional planes of life, to realize freedom. Remember, it is not you who decides, because as soon as you think you decide to help your daughter, you direct and direct the light according to an emotional bond, and not a bond of love. But be assured, that the whole intelligence of light, carried by the awakened sisters and brothers, is enough to cushion what was called the shock of humanity. Remember also that the longer time goes by, the easier it will be, at the moment of the shock of humanity, to live with more and more lightness, the process of ending the dream. But do not seek to guide, do not seek to change anyone, be content to be who you are, beyond the self, within the natural state, because that is how you serve each other, with the same equality and intensity, without making any preference or difference, which is only a sign of attachment. Love and light are for each one of us, according to their capacity to embrace us, but cannot depend in any way on any bond whatsoever, even if it is logical for the person and concerning his child. One writer said, your children are not your children. 
And don't forget that thinking about this can be an obstacle to discovering freedom in you and what gives experience. You cannot direct light in any way, you can only be and let intelligence work where it should. And certainly not according to a link, and certainly not according to a desire and even less through a desire for good. This is how you will best help your daughter, this is how you will help all children much better, without making a difference and without making a distinction. I am well aware that the maternal bond is the bond where the greatest predation, but also that greatest love that is conditioned, is exercised. It is precisely for you the challenge to accept this, it is precisely for you the opportunity to live a gate, without asking for anything, without expecting anything, there is trust in the intelligence of light, and there is the only absolute truth. Silence. Beloved, if anyone else wants to question, testify or anything else. Silence. No one goes to the microphone. Well, we're waiting. Silence has the same effectiveness as questioning or testimonies. Silence. In the present silence, the heart of each one resonates in each heart, there is only one heart. Feel free to break the silence when questions and testimonies touch your conscience. Sister, I have a question. Is Mother Mary, Queen of Heaven and Earth, present with us? Beloved, as has been said, Mary is totally ignorant of the fact that she was Mary. This was already the case when she was Mary at the time of history. Such is her humility today that she will never be able to accept to be Mary, until the moment when our body of eternity joins her. It is present in your heavens, it is present in a body, but the junction has not yet been totally realized unfortunately. This will only happen at the last moment, such as Mary's humility, at that time as well as at the historical time of Christ's presence. It is very difficult for you to imagine that Mary has been able to travel this world since historical times, like each of you. And yet, this is the strip truth. Remember, and this has been the subject of many communications from the elders, that everything you create must be assumed within this set creation, from beginning to end, in its entirety, with a veil of ignorance, however, perhaps even thicker for her, than for the common brother and sister. The same is true for many Elohim, having incarnated in the last cycles or since the first cycle of confinement. You have been told not to judge, because you do not know, by having anyone in front of you, whatever your feelings and vibrations, you may have a triangle in front of you, in the assassin. Beyond our physical body, do not trust appearances, do not trust speeches, do not trust powers, but simply trust love, so that you love in the same way, with the same equality, as I said, the sin does the murderer. Because love never makes a difference, otherwise it would be conditioned and it would no longer be a gate, but a personal story. In the same way that the sun dispenses its rays to everyone without making a difference, so is a gate. Many elders, some elders and some stars, have told you this through their experiences in incarnation. It is the one who accepts the smallest of you who is the greatest in heaven, and it is impossible otherwise. It also means today that any being who claims any posture or position, teaching, superiority or control, would be in the deepest spiritual illusions and spiritual pride. Agape love is present only within your simplest humanity, within your lowliness. Moreover, it has been said that to live the whole and to live the truth, one must accept to be nothing. How can you be nothing, from the moment you claim, through a posture, a power, an energy or outfit, to represent such a master, such a function, such a religion? This is a misrepresentation of the truth. The one who is the greatest in heaven is necessarily the smallest here, because he or she is at the service of everyone. As long as you are deluded by a posture, by speech, by an outfit, by an energy, by vibration, you can be sure that it is not the truth, because the truth is of unfailing humility, and it cannot be otherwise. Any search for ancestry, or for a different positioning of the simplest humanity, leads to terrible pitfalls today, to take oneself for something other than what you are, that is, the nothing that leads to the whole. They are only games of consciousness, games of pride and total illusions. Silence. 
I'll let you speak freely whenever you wish. I repeat, do not hesitate to interrupt the silence when you feel it. Silence. Voice slash brother. Hello, Abba. Silence. Following what has just been said, I have a question. So it happened to me in the past, to live moments, especially one among others, when I asked in silence, asking Mary, if I could, being very tired, have a good night's sleep. And I went to bed. When I woke up in the morning, I heard a voice, which I recognized, because I heard it before through my name, through the fact that it named me after my name. And when I woke up in the morning, when I got out of bed, I heard loud and clear, Are you Jean Claude? This voice crossed my mind and the benefits lasted three days. Am I in the fabulation? Beloved, how could a fabulation make you feel good for three days? Laughs. The imaginary has no action on the real. What is called imaginal, or the great sky, has an effect on your reality. You have your answer yourself through what you just said. Then I will simply answer you. But who asks the question, if not the little character still present at times who doubts what he is going through? Fabulation has no action on reality. It can deceive, it can illusion, it can swindle, but it can only last for a time. As far as you are concerned and it concerns you individually, but it is you in relation to yourself, you say you have seen the effects yourself. How can you still talk about fabulation? This is evidently more than real. Vivi has told you this, and more and more of you are seeing it, and more and more of you are also seeing me intervene with you at night in different ways. What more do you need? This is undoubted proof that this is much more real, much more real than the illusion of this world. It is precisely the possibility of light today to act without an intermediary, in you, since the whole of creation is in you, and not elsewhere. And that is the formal proof that it is the truth. But of course, it is logical to doubt in the face of this naked act that reveals itself, and, of course, the little person's first reflex is to ask himself whether he has dreamed. But it had been said at other times that the dream was the real, and that the real was a dream. It was the first step, and it is indeed so often like that, even though you see and feel in your life, or in the morning when you wake up, it is simply the eruption of the sacred into the simulacrum. Until you realize, there's only you, and ultimately, there's no one. Silence. Voice, sister, love to you. To affirm the word slash verb, I am the way, the truth and the life, even before I have realized it, is it to be deluded or to activate this realization? Beloved, I take you back, it is not a question of realization, but of awakening. Realization is about self, and therefore about illusion. The self is not real, nor is the character or the person. It simply translates what you might call a luciferic initiation, but it does not represent the truth. The truth is the absolute, everything else is relative, everything else is falsified. So let's start again if you don't mind, by replacing your realization term with an awakening. Of course, and you know it, for many years now, our word has been transformed by conscious co-creation into the creative word slash verb. Your words are no longer just words, but are the acting word slash verb. So of course, the ultimate key was hidden within your first and last name, as I have decided long before the creation. Today, to affirm, I am the way, the truth, the life, from the word in the heart, is indeed enough to live it, as soon as you have pronounced the ultimate key, of course. The word became flesh, and the flesh becomes word slash verb, and all this is you, for there's only you, and there's no one. It is not a play on words, it is to be lived, it brings out contentment and there is a gape. Then, of course, it is far preferable to say, I am the way, the truth and the life, than to say I am this miserable character, I am this suffering, or I am these problems, or I am these bonds, or I am this disease, because the intelligence of light is there and works through the Christic matrix everywhere. Of course, the intelligence of light will follow your words, and anchor them in you. It is not a form of self-persuasion, but rather a concrete reality of the power of the human word slash verb. 
what has been developed for you concerning conscious co-creation, and especially the primordial androgyne, gives you access to this primacy of the word slash verb. It also means paying attention to what you think, paying attention to what you say, in order to be as a gay president as possible, whatever words come out of you, whatever thoughts are expressed in you. This does not mean refusing thoughts, but being in a form of ulkidity and precision about the words that come out of you. And it is much better to affirm, I am the way, the truth and the life, than, for example, I am such a profession, or I have such a profession, the efficiency you suspect, has nothing to do with it. In the first case, you affirm an ideal that will come true, be sure, because it is your word slash verb. In the other case, you maintain the illusion of being locked up and believing yourself to be this character, living this story. Silence. Voice, brother. Hello Ab. I was just wondering, I have a certain questioning, let us say in relation to what had been said recently, that we could decree, so I wondered if in this body, the affirmation is also to decree that I am the way, the truth and the life, if it is the same effect, if we can say, the affirmation or the decree. The statement is not quite decreed, I think that's why I did use that word, but indeed, being a carrier of the word slash verb, even if you don't realize it yet, you just have to decree things, and that's it. This is also in line with the previous question. It is much more true to say, I am the way, the truth and the life, than to affirm a profession or a function in this world. But here again, don't believe me, check it out for yourself. You are bearers of the word slash verb, you are bearers of conscious co-creation, even if you do not feel the eleventh body or the twelfth body, the word slash verb is from everywhere. Then use your word slash verb to decree a gate, use your word slash verb to decree that you are the way, the truth and the life, the intelligence of light will conform to it, that's what you are. Silence. Voice slash sister. Hello Abba. When we are spontaneous, when we are a spontaneous person, when we are spontaneous, we know that our words are the word slash verb, how do we balance things to remain spontaneous? I'm not sure, despite what I heard, what you're asking. How do you stay spontaneous? It's that I don't want to hurt anyone. So, if you don't want to hurt anyone, either you stay silent or you turn, as the expression says, seven times with your tongue in your mouth, before you speak. Whether you like it or not, whether you know it or not, today you are all carriers of the word slash verb, and, of course, as I answered the previous question, it is far better to affirm to be the way, the truth and the life than to affirm to be this character, his sufferings, his bonds, his wounds or his lacks. What you are paying attention to gets stronger. The words you actually pronounce have become the word slash verb. This means that if, for example, you are used to complaining, you will complain more and more. If you ignore this complaint and affirm, for example, that you are I am the way, the truth and the life, you will only find that you can never complain again, whatever the circumstances of your life or your body. That is why, at some point in time of what you are experiencing, living and going through at this moment, you will also realize that if the one wants silence is far preferable to your words, and that there will be times, if not already the case, when you need to remain in silence, precisely in order to avoid that the words that have become the word slash verb, are aggression, condemnation and injury towards anyone. It is better to be in silence than to speak to maintain the illusion. And the more you adopt the principle of limiting your words to what is necessary and right, rather than babbling or talking for nothing, which in any case carry the word slash verb. When you see the effects of one positioning or another, silence, measured and weighed words, or meaningless discussions, you can only notice the difference in result. In one case, you feed the character in the story, especially by telling each other stories, or you can only talk about the essential, that is, a gape. In this way, you will also put an end to your own suffering, which you maintain in your own words, through your own repetitions and through your own complaints. What complains will always be the character, what sings of love and says love, will always be eternity, and you cannot escape this constant. This will put an end to sterile discussions, it will put an end to the need to speak to speak, your word will be measured and can only express the truth.
but you will no longer be able to express what concerns you as a character, if not for the pleasure of sharing your testimonies, but absolutely not to talk about the weather, to talk stupidly, or to talk to people who had nothing to do with the truth. When you see the different effects, what I call babbling or sterile words, unlike the word slash verb with measured speech, you can only conform to what you see. Silence, even words, is in some cases preferable to babbling, to discussions that have no head or tail, and that take you nowhere else but to maintain the story and the character. Silence is indeed the most conducive to letting the truth be experienced. It doesn't mean no more talking, it just means measuring what you're going to say. Spontaneity, if you adopt it, will allow you to let words flow freely from you, without reference to any story, without reference to any condition, and especially to no maintenance of the character. If you only talk about yourself, you are only talking about the illusion. If you talk about a gate, about your testimonies, you are real. It is up to you to see what you feed, to see what you trigger in your own words, and if you hesitate, indeed, prefer silence and embrace. Most often, the words of the human being are only justifications, that babbling as I said, a gap is the word slash verb, the problem being that the word slash verb is also present in your babbling, and that babbling, sterile discussions about this world, about your clothes or the weather, only reinforce the story and the character. But if you speak openly, with humility and simplicity, about what you are experiencing intimately, what you have to testify, by feeling each of your speeches on kindness and on a gate, you will see the immediate effects on the one who was listening to you. It is better to be in silence than to speak to maintain the illusion. And the more you adopt the principle of limiting your words to what is necessary and right, rather than babbling or talking for nothing, which in any case carry the word slash verb. When you see the effects of one positioning or another, silence, measured and weighed words, or meaningless discussions, you can only notice the difference in result. In one case, you feed the character in the story, especially by telling each other stories, or you can only talk about the essential, that is, a gape. In this way, you will also put an end to your own suffering, which you maintain in your own words, through your own repetitions and through your own complaints. What complains will always be the character, who sings of love and says love, will always be eternity, and you cannot escape this constant. This will put an end to sterile discussions, it will put an end to the need to speak to speak, your word will be measured and can only express the truth. But you will no longer be able to express what concerns you as a character, if not for the pleasure of sharing your testimonies, but absolutely not to talk about the weather, to talk stupidly, or to talk to people who had nothing to do with the truth. When you see the different effects, what I call babbling or sterile words, unlike the word slash verb with measured speech, you can only conform to what you see. Silence, even words, is in some cases preferable to babbling, to discussions that have no head or tail, and that take you nowhere else but to maintain the story and the character. Silence is indeed the most conducive to letting the truth be experienced. It doesn't mean no more talking, it just means measuring what you're going to say. Spontaneity, if you adopt it, will allow you to let words flow freely from you, without reference to any story, without reference to any condition, and especially to no maintenance of the character. If you only talk about yourself, you are only talking about the illusion. If you talk about a gate, about your testimonies, you are real. It is up to you to see what you feed, to see what you trigger in your own words, and if you hesitate, indeed, prefer silence and embrace. Most often, the words of the human being are only justifications, that babbling as I said, a gap is the word slash verb, the problem being that the word slash verb is also present in your babbling, and that babbling, sterile discussions about this world, about your clothes or the weather, only reinforce the story and the character. But if you speak openly, with humility and simplicity, about what you are experiencing intimately, what you have to testify, by feeling each of your speeches on kindness and on a gate, you will see the immediate effects on the one who was listening to you. Silence. Voice, sister. Dear Abba, in spontaneity I sometimes hurt without wanting to hurt. If in spontaneity I am hurt, I tell myself that it is a call to love, it does not mean that love is made immediately, but it allows me to go and see in myself who hurts and who wants to hurt, and let true love rise.
Beloved, you said it yourself, it is always that person who hurts, and it is always the other person who was hurt. A gap cannot be heard by any word, because if there is an injury, then there is not a completed gate, there are still unlit areas in this apparent injury that only concerns the person, is it also a lie that only passes through. So don't worry about that when you're spontaneous. Remember that a gape is right and true, and expresses itself precisely through spontaneity. From the moment you live a gate, there is never any mistake for the words that come out of your mouth, even if you have to think, as I said, and turn your tongue in your mouth seven times for those who do not yet live a gape. But he who saw a gate, even if he heard someone else, that, of course, was written, and does not judge according to appearances, does not judge according to the wound inflicted on the person or experienced by the person, even if it is illusory, but rather observes the results, which results from that. Whether it sends you back to a form of guilt, or to an inner look as you say, do not judge the reactions, do not judge in the immediate future, but simply let what is to happen happen happen. The same word can hurt a brother, while the same words will open the heart of the other, but the result will always be the same, since all this is only something that is played, since all this does not exist. But of course, the voice of childhood is the path to spontaneity, no matter how wrong the words are, because these words carry the word slash verb, and they will necessarily touch the other, one way or the other. Don't worry about the reactions, don't worry about the injury you seem to have caused, but just be true and authentic. Do not let yourself be stopped by circumstances, do not let yourself be stopped by what seems to you to be heard, which is ultimately only a pretext to let the awakening in every possible way. As I said, the simulacrum joins the sacred, they are currently almost totally superimposed and in action both of them jointly. There is no question here of making people feel guilty, or even mentioning the slightest guilt, but once again to be lucid about the consequences, and not about the immediate action or effect of what might seem to have hurt, because it is, I remind you, always the person who was hurt, a gap cannot be hurt. Thank you. Voice, brother. Dear Abba, I would like you to tell us about the real influence when a person or people experience the zero point, the influence on others. You become, as I said, carrier of the information of zero time, through the radiance of the fire of the sacred heart, which is spontaneous and natural, that you cannot direct in any way. So, at that moment, you are the contaminant agent, you are the agent who makes it possible through silence, through words, simply by passing through the street, through the gaze, through the smile, to make zero time available to the heart of the other, because there is only one heart, and we are all in each other. It is your presence that is active, whether it is through words, whether it is through a smile, whether it is through silence, it makes no difference. The effect of zero time is simply the contamination, resonance, common absorption of essences, the realization and concretization of the experience that each person is in each other, whatever appearances, forms, animosities, conflicts, differences in age, sex or anything else. A gap is goodness, a gap is service, a gap is self-giving and sacrifice, the other becomes you. And spontaneously and naturally, you can no longer inflict the slightest suffering, because this suffering, you would only inflict on yourself, and this is intolerable in a gape. It is not a guilt, it is not a defect, but it is the strip truth. Silence. Voice, Sister. At the beginning of the earth, Cirrus deposited a crystal in the center of the earth. And last year, you told us that you went to remove the blue crystal that the Elohim had brought at the time of the heavenly Jerusalem. Is it the same crystal? Yes, of course, which was only the reflection or fragment, but it is a hologram in relation to the crystalline ray of the earth. This crystal has been replaced on Mary's forehead, which is her rightful place. What is the question? Was it the same crystal? It was the same resonance, it's the same information. The important thing is not that it is the same crystal, but that it comes from the same source and carries the same information. But it was indeed the crystal, 
brought by the Aloims to the Council of Alta, which had been sheltered in the territory and country called Argentina, which was replaced on Mary's forehead, and thus putting an end to the primary anomaly in the crystalline nucleus of the Earth, which was only the result of the crystal mattresses brought by the geneticists' mothers, which had been compressed in every sense of the word, by the electromagnetic confinement linked to the Urkons. This has liberated the Earth, not only as it was in 2011, but has allowed the whole of creation to reveal itself here on Earth. That is why all the ships of the Intergalactic Confederation, the Galactic Confederation, but also the Urkons, and all the mobile forces, are now present in the atmosphere of the Earth. You say it's the same information in both crystals, what's the information? This is already what is called life mattresses, which allow the organization of the form. The so-called geneticist mothers, or great mothers, have made it possible, through the information relayed by the crystals, to create the dream and to maintain the stream. The dream having been completed, it was normal that this crystal, in terms of its information, should return to one of the main ones, within the dream. Information is simply what was called many years ago, the radiance of the Holy Spirit, linked, of course, to Cirrus. The information is both that of zero time, but also of the impulse of the first dream, which corresponds to the last dream. There was no longer any reason to keep it hidden, there was no longer any reason to keep it at the center of the earth, the alignment was being realized, both with the source, Elcyon, the galactic center, and with Cirrus. And since the dream no longer has any reason to exist, creation no longer has to be dreamed either. Silence. Voice, sister. Hello Abba. Is it, as long as we value the dream, it will persist? What? Repeating. I heard that, but I don't understand what that means. What does it mean to hold on to the dream? It is to hold on to what binds us, to hold on to our children, to hold on to our activities, to hold on to the sun, to hold on to nature, as long as we want to enjoy what is there, we keep the dream alive. But beloved, only you can see if you enjoy it freely, or with ties. Life is also about being in the sun, life is also about loving your children, but only you can know if it is a bond, an attachment, or freedom. It all depends, I would say as Biddy would say, from your own point of view. But if we look at the whole of humanity, will we have to wait for everyone to be free in the dream? Never, it was never said that. You could wait a long time and wait endlessly. There was never any question of everyone being released for the event, it seems to me. This has been expressed hundreds of times by the commander of the elders, many years ago. It was enough that what you sometimes call, I find humorously, the ground team, that is to say all those who have eight of crowns, be prepared, you have been, the number has been reached for a very long time. But it has never been a question of waiting for the whole of humanity a little sidly and consciously, the liquidity and reality of this will be realized by the stasis itself. Yesterday, in a gate's channelings, it seemed to me that she said it had started. The event has been underway for many months now, yes. You really must not look inside yourself, or around you, to avoid seeing and living it. Remember, as presented by one of the Melchizedek's, concerning the shock of humanity, many years ago, of course, that the individual event takes place for more and more brothers and sisters, but it was never said, once again, that everyone must live it before the event. This is impossible. There are enough obstacles through those who dream, even through, as the commander explained, certain geometrical, architectural structures present on earth, to prevent this process of liberation. You are the event, those who are already living it individually, a gate, and that is what triggers the event. But there's never been any linearity, it is a process that you could call quantum, with a switching threshold. The switch of a threshold was largely crossed many months ago, exactly at the end of the 132 days. I remind you that at the beginning of the year, you are given the sign of Jonah. I am not going to go back into the scriptures, falsified, but nevertheless some of his signs are real, the simulacrum has lived the sign of Jonah, the sacred too. If you had to wait until the whole of humanity was in agreement with a gate, a gate would never have been born, because dreamers do not want to wake up. 
They play that game of consciousness, they are terrified by a gate who puts an end to the dream of individuality, and it is among these brothers and sisters that the greatest resistance to a gate is found, because they are not awake, whatever they see and whatever they say. It has never been a question of waiting for the totality to live it, since the totality will live it through the collective event. Silence. Voice. Dear Abba, we are at the end of the time allotted. Beloved ones, then allow me to deliver all my blessings to the heart of your heart, in this assembly and throughout this country called Quebec. Silence. Anahata Abba. Bramis Kaya. Amacha. Anahata Agape. And I say to you forever, in the primordial ether and in the naked joy. Through Jean Luc A. Yon. The Transformations. English Translation. LMF.